Hello everyone, welcome back to round 11 of the Bremen Pokemon Trading Card Game Regional Championships. I'm Nick Pierce and I'm here with... Lydia Hombach from uh, Limitless. Yes. Yeah, and we are here with, again, round 11. We will be featuring the one match we could get before everyone else <laughs> <laughs> sets up. And this is uh, going to be Tamal Cameron of the UK against uh, Stian from, I believe it's Norway? Norway, yeah. 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 And um, Tamal will be playing Xerneas Break, and Stian, we're actually not sure what he's playing. We're not sure what he's playing, no. Uh, Stian went into the two on fourth seat, so uh, he probably, yeah, he lost round one, but uh, he's still in a good, he should still be in a good position for the day if he, he managed to play this uh, day. Yeah, yeah, way. absolutely. Uh, oh, I think I saw an Octillery in Stian's hand, so he's probably playing Gardevoir. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Um, Tamara is going to be happy to see that. I think like, Gardevoir is one of the matchups that uh, the Xerneas break player normally feels pretty confident about. Yeah. So, um, we'll, yeah, we definitely be interested to see how this plays out. We did see the Xerneas break deck once yesterday, piloted by another CCG member, Luke Kirkham. Luke got a little bit bodied by uh, yeah. <laughs> Jesper, though, <laughs> which is uh, Luke has a very unfortunate draws, and Jesper had some very good setup. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, so, so here goes a handshake. Uh, the um, we're going to say to each other. We're going to coordinate the start, and we can. Start. We can. The game begins, and uh, Stian flipping over that Remoraid, and indeed we can see. Yeah, he's playing Gardevoir. He's not going to be happy to see that Xerneas in the no. opponent's <laughs> active. So the re the real key thing about um, the we're keeping about this matchup, it, it, there's two parts. First of all, uh, all Tamal's attackers are one prizes, so yeah. whenever Stian knocks something out then it's not really, it, it, it's, it's a losing prize trade. And the Gardevoir player needs free energy to take a KO on the, the Xerneas break. Yeah. And because the Gardevoir deck normally is a little bit slow to set up, then normally it means that the Xerneas break player has a chance to do lots of Geomancies and at that point get big knockouts on Gardevoirs. Yeah, definitely. That's the, the prize trade is always a good thing. And uh, yeah, as you said, Xerneas is a little bit faster in terms of setting up as it's only the, the break is only one evolution and uh God of War obviously is a stage two yeah. Pokemon. Yeah the only time where God of War is faster is if it can you know get the ridiculous you know turn two red handy yeah. guard and everything but this doesn't always happen. Normally it's a little bit slower you maybe yeah. Bridget turn one, maybe it evolves with a couple of curliers and especially in this situation where Stian actually did not draw a single basic Pokemon oh, on that end. Only the Remoride. Yeah, he's just as starting with it. That is not great. But well, he's quite lucky that he's playing against uh, Xerneas, as Xerneas only has one well one one uh, energy attack, and this attack isn't really doing any damage. Yeah, uh, but in the meantime, Tamal getting the perfect start as he has a Bridget ready in hand, and he has the fairy yeah. energy already, so he can just you know, get Xerneas, get Oranguru maybe, or free Xerneas, whichever he prefers, and he can just start doing these geomancies. Which is exactly what he wants to see. Yeah, he, he just placed uh, three Xerneas face down. Maybe he's double checking whether the Oranguru is in his deck or some other things he might like to check. Maybe count his energies, count his Xerneas break. Cards that are important and he doesn't want to, to find in his prize cards. Yeah, definitely. He needs to keep track of all the counts really accurately. I don't see the Oranguru there available to him, so either he doesn't play one, but I'd be shocked if he didn't play one, or more than likely it's in one of his six prize cards. But then for now, he just yep, flips over three Xerneas, so he's got all four of them yeah. out of turn one, which is pretty good. Um, and I imagine after this, we will just see an attached to the active energy of Mansi. Yep, probably. Let's just bring them out there. Maybe, we'll see. Maybe, you see if there's anything else he wants to do, he wants to do with his hand first. So he does have the Xerneas break ready actually, and a Max Elixir. Oh, so. a Max Elixir. Yeah, I was wondering why he even started shuffling his deck. What playing a Max Elixir, this makes sense. Yeah, because he, he wants to, but now that he's done it, yeah. he's just going to quickly attach to the active, and he will be doing the Geomancy, and I imagine attaching to the... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that the just, judge just told him he should shuffle his deck, but Jamar was like, oh, I, I'm just going to attack with Geomancy now, so I, I might save some time here and uh, yeah, just shuffle once. Yeah, yeah, and that's, uh, that's exactly what he's done. So Geomancy, as we said, one on each, onto each of the Xerneas and no energy. It's important, it's important when you're playing Xerneas break to spread around your energy because you want to lose the minimum amount possible every time a Xerneas is KO'd. 
um, that CN. Oh, oh, finally finding a bridge. Yeah. So obviously getting it turn two isn't ideal, but at the same time better than getting it much later. So yeah. at least now he can, you know, get his routers out and uh, maybe start setting up some attackers and uh, try and mount uh, some sort of counter events against this stream of Xenia's breaks. So I haven't seen what cards he, he picked. I think it were two routes at least, maybe three. Uh, it would be either two routes and maybe a Vulpix or three routes. Oh uh, yeah, uh, a dozen of Vulpix would make sense as well. Yeah. Um, we, I mean, we don't know if he plays it, but I'd be shocked if he didn't, to yeah. be honest. Most lists are playing it nowadays. Um, just, just because, again, in a Nage Stage 2 deck, it's just too valuable of an asset. But he is just going to give one last check, make sure that he knows all his counts again, make sure that he knows what he has access to during the game and what he doesn't. And just take one, we're going to take one last look at his hand as well. Uh, and indeed, it looks like he's going to go for two rolls and an Eevee. Oh, oh, okay. So he's playing the Sylveon version. Yeah, and he's, he uh, attached an energy to Eevee, um, triggering uh, Eevee, no, energy energy evolution yeah, uh, and dev evolving into a Sylveon. Yep, yeah, so with that, he'll be able to, if he has a floatstone to retreat the Remoraid, he can uh, retreat, bring that up, and then do magical ribbons and search for any free cards from his deck. Uh, we'll see if that's a move he has access to, though. It looks like maybe not the case. Yeah. Yeah, he just passed. It, it, most guard of our list don't tend to play any floatstone, yeah. so that's probably why he wasn't yeah, able to do this. Yeah, because some, some guard of our lists do play Fairy Garden, which allows you to, well, which says all Pokemon with a Fairy energy attached to have no retreat cost. So that's why you usually don't need floatstone. Right. Okay. Yeah, um, meanwhile, on Tamao, he literally... So this is one thing he can do with Xerneas, so he can just really play very conservatively. See, all he did that turn was just evolve a Xerneas into a break and then do Geomancy, because he knows he's afforded this time, he knows he doesn't have to rush too much, he can just... Even if his first Xerneas goes down, which yeah. is unlikely anyway, it, he's still in a fine position. By the way, I think Tamao is placing his uh, break kind of strange. Usually you just place it across the picture, but he, he placed it uh, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Yeah, it, it, the breaks are designed in a way where they're meant to go over the picture of the card because the idea is they can use the attacks from the one below. So yeah. like design-wise, you can still see the lower attacks, but I guess it, it turns out like the, the way the cards are placed, it looks kind of, it, it's it kind of awkward. It looks weird to... and it looks kind of big and yeah. I can understand it. Yeah, but this just looks a bit weirder. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not quite sure what to say. Um, so Stian attached a double colors to the Remoraid before Sycamoring, retreated and is going to bring up the Sylveon and we will see a magical ribbon to search for free cards from his deck. Eventually. Maybe now, maybe tomorrow. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that moment of hesitation, you know, just before, you know, making sure that you're not missing oh. anything. He, he took his cards quite fast, so he, he must be knowing what he was going for. Probably a rare candy Gardevoir and something else. Uh, maybe a second Gardevoir, yeah. just so you can get both of them out. Or maybe a draw support, depending on what he has in his hand. Yeah. Uh, Ultra Ball from Tamal there, discarding what looks to be a Guzma and something which is a bit glad out. Oh, uh, a Fairy Garden. Yeah, it's got yeah. a Guzma and a Fairy Garden. And it's going to be for a Lele, she's going to find him. This uh, wonder tag for an N, which is very important because he wants to make sure that yeah. the N won't be able to make use of the free card he just magical ribboned. Yeah, discarding Fairy Garden is actually a, a good choice because, well, Tamaru does not really rely on it that much, and as only some Gardevoir variants play it, he does not really want to give his opponent uh, a opportunity. And he's also oh now he's playing Fairy Garden, so <laughs> yeah, but he's. He also does not need to be afraid of a counter stadium as, uh, well, the, the only stadium that makes sense to play in Gardevoir is Fairy Garden, yeah. so. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's a kind of the Fairy Garden, because he knows that he won't get countered, it's uh, only had the other one, it's yeah. absolutely fine to just sort of play it down. It is a shame, as you said, that he's now given Stian the option of retreating for free as well. Of course, stadiums always affect both players, so with Stian playing on Fairy Energy, he means he, he has a bit more flexibility, but to now just deciding that I still want that flexibility myself, so I don't mind playing the Fairy Garden still. But on the other hand, if Stian is playing Fairy Garden, he now has a lot of dead cards in his deck. Yeah, so. indeed. And uh, something else we neglected to mention actually, Tamal, d it, the Ogre wasn't prized, he must have just missed it in his oh, original deck search, he was okay. able to bench it, so it's interesting to see. Um, oh, it makes me wonder why he didn't get it off of the first Bridget. Maybe he just wants to prioritize getting his attackers first Probably. because because he knew that he'd be fine to just Geomancy a few turns, it gives him more turns to find that Ogre. I'd imagine that's the case. 
Yeah, probably. Um, with that, a double colorless goes on the Taku Lele on the bench. And again, yeah, we're going to see another Geomancy charging up the Xerneas with one energy and that Oranguru. So now everything is loaded up. <laughs> oh, yeah. And his field looks quite good. Especially compared to Stian's one uh, field, Stian hasn't been able to evolve into a Gardevoir yet. No. He has not that many energies into play. Of course, compared to Tamaro, who was able to find all these energies through Geomancy quite quickly. Uh, yeah, this looks quite empty. <laughs> Yeah, the problem from Stian's side as well. Oh, sorry, I guys, I went to bed really late last night in case it wasn't obvious. Um, the problem with, from Stian's uh, side as well is that he his uh, magical ribbon got end away. So it just means he needs to sort of research for his uh, Gardevoirs and uh, maybe a he has a red candy in his hand. So if he so he can yeah. use that to evolve that. Um, maybe actually it might end up working out after all. But I don't think I see a draw supporter in his hand. Not really, which is. Quite strange as Stian used Magical Ribbon last turn and well. No, he got End, oh, remember? Oh, yeah. Okay. So he would, yeah, he would, he definitely would have searched for one, but um, Tamat would end it all the way. And so thankfully he was able to search for the record, he was able to get the Red Handy Guard of again off the end, but it looks like Stian might be just because to Magical Ribbon again. Probably just debating whether it's worth attaching the DCE before doing so. Probably. Because the problem is, if you put it onto a uh, Gardevoir, maybe it just gets Ghostwood and KO'd. But at the same time, you don't you want to start building up the energy to actually take KOs and stuff. But yeah, especially if you if you are that far behind in attaching energies. This is interesting. Steen attached a DC to the Active Sylveon. He might be debating a Plea GX. Probably. So Plea GX is. Uh, Let's you. Uh, it's a really, really powerful GX attack. It lets you pick two of your opponent's uh, bench Pokemon and return them with all cards attached to the hand. So we can like set them out back quite a lot because you see, yeah, pick, having to pick up both of the Xerneases and now all of a sudden Tamara is like four energy attachments behind compared to where he was before. It's like yeah. losing two whole Geomancies essentially. Yeah. Um, he, he lost two rounds. Yeah. And now Stian isn't in a that bad position. As he can attach energies a little bit faster through the uh, God of War GX's ability, and uh, he he almost has a second God of War out, which means he can attach three energies per turn. Yeah, definitely. Um, with it looks like Smash wandering over to Geomancy again. He might be worried that there's no energy left in his deck because it's all just gone to his hand. Yeah. Um, he manages. He gets one energy down onto the bench Xerneas debating whether he's not benched the other one yet but he will yeah. do now um yeah it's it looks like he's yeah. confident that he has enough left to do it go for the gym there's one and there's two oh. okay yeah so he's fine i wonder if he knew that there are only two energies left into his deck in his deck or whether I... he didn't knew for sure and that's why he was thinking so long Possibly, you might have been trying to remember that's a, back to his last deck search, so like how much paint did I see? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but uh, from Stian's side now, um, it's interesting that he opted to use the Field Blower earlier to discard the Fairy Garden, because now if he left it out, he would have could have you know used that to retreat the Sylveon for free and bring up the Gardevoir. Yeah. But now he will have to discard like the Double Colors probably instead to uh, to retreat the Sylveon. And he still doesn't have a draw supporter either, as far I as think, I can tell. I think Stian was afraid of the uh, Xerneas break. And he, he rather liked to, to sit on the Sylveon a little bit longer and to maybe use Miraculous Shine a few more times. Uh, but, then, um, the, 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 well, you can only use Plea GX once. Oh, no, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's because it's a GX attack. Um, yeah, I know. I know. I, I, yeah, I know. Again, yeah, just to maybe uh, sit on it. Maybe just do magical ribbon some more. Maybe yeah, sit that, on some more. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, maybe that's why he's thinking. And is he just going for the magical ribbon now? It looks like he is. Yeah, he's yeah. picked up his deck. So again, again, search for free cards. Um, yeah, miraculous shine is it's the Espionix oh. attack. That's the only thing the other one to devolve stuff. That's why. That's why I got a little bit confused. Um, but yeah, now Tamau is uh, gonna be up to the Oki again and he's got Kazuga how much energy he has down another energy goes onto the active plus the fairy garden does he have the break in hand it does not look like it no i mean it's still fine because of the fairy garden yeah. you can retreat into the other one 
but he would like to get out some more Xerneas breaks as quickly as he can. That's a good thing about breaks. You can you can always see them. You can always <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. They have a very distinct design, don't they? Um, so from this, Tamau, he looks like he had no second break, but he does have another Max Elixir, so he can play that. So just uh, again, load up another Xerneas, and he does hit it. Of course, it does make sense. He just played. Uh, he just played the end mm -hmm. and uh, chopped back in all the energy that got yeah. plead into his hand. So it's actually pretty cool from him. And he actually, I think he has enough energy. Let's see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven energy on the field. That's actually exactly enough, or like just over enough, to get the KO and the Sylveon with. Um, I believe that's two ten HP. I'm not sure. I think it is two ten. It's either two ten or two hundred. Yeah. Either way, enough for a knockout, which is great for him. So. Yep, yeah, yeah, it's Dean just yeah. counting. Yeah, Tamal has done the mass right. Sorry. <laughs> um, down yeah. goes the Sylveon, and now Tamal has managed to get a really nice early lead. And this is the problem that uh, Stian might run into now. He needs to find either. I mean, I guess two energy is not really a whole lot to ask for. But unlike, say, against the uh, EX or GX Pokemon, Choice Band can't be used yeah. to get that extra. So it's like one less way he has to get into that one fifty damage that he needs to take knockout, which can sometimes make the difference between hitting or missing. And we can also see that Tamara is playing quite clever here. He's not attaching more than two energies on one Pokemon. So he, he wants to to help Stian as, as less as possible. <laughs> yeah, just and this is the way you have to play the yeah. these sort of these decks that just do as much damage as possible for all the energy you have out, it, they always play in a way where you just spread the energy so you have as little energy as possible on each Pokemon so that you lose the least possible. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly what Tamal has done. Now, if this Xerneas break does go down, and considering Stian has got a double colorless off of his Ultra Ball, I assume he has the other follow-up energies he needs to get the KO, because otherwise that <laughs> otherwise that might yeah, end up feeling <laughs> might, otherwise he might end up feeling a little bit silly. Um, there is, oh, okay, I see a fairy. Oh, that's just a bench though. Oh, he has another double colorless. Okay. Yeah, so that's fine. Go for the Abyssal Hand now. Uh, getting another Rolts. He has got, well, he's got enough of the KO because there's free energy yeah, on But I, I think he has an Ultra Ball on his head and is considering playing it. What, possibly for a second Octillery, possibly for a Gardevoir. That could, it has been out for a turn after all. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting actually. Interesting. It's so interesting, I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think he does not necessarily need to play it now, because if he gets end, he still has four, he has his uh, Octillery, so he should be fine. Uh, if he's going to knock out the Xerneas, he has five new cards that should be actually good, and he does not really need another God of War out, and uh, yeah. Yeah, and I think him sort of agreeing with you there, Lydia, deciding, you know what, I can actually just save this. Opting to go for the infinite force, knocking out the Xerneas break, and now it's going to be back on to Mal. He has got the Ultra Ball in hand, so he will be able to find himself a replacement Xerneas break, which is great for him. He also finds the experience share, but sadly one turn too late because yeah. <laughs> he did lose those two energies. But it shouldn't be too much of a struggle for Tamal to get the KO here. He's lost two energy, but he's already managed to get uh, a choice band down. So now. Tamau actually just needs, because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine energy on the field. So he actually needs one more attachment to get the KO on his guard So the choice band that's already already 210 he's doing. So with one more energy, it's 230, which is a knockout. Which is which is a really good position for Tamau to be in. So really all he wants to dig for at this point is to make sure he has enough energy, XP shares, follow-up attackers to carry him through to his last two prizes. Yeah. Because the next two prizes are already guaranteed. So he is attaching an energy to his bench Tapu Lele. Yep, that's the one extra energy he needs to get the knockout. Um, and although, hold on, does that mean he's not got? He must have the Xerneas break in hand already because if he doesn't, then he didn't. Then he would have searched for it off of the uh, off of the Ultra Ball there. For sure. Um, oh, he has oh, a, yeah, another Ultra Ball. Yeah, there you go. This makes sense. Oh no, no, oh. Sigma. Oh, okay. Does he have two Xerneas break prized? I don't know. He must do. Oh. So he was actually digging for his rescue stretcher. That's what's happening. Because, yeah, I was thinking otherwise, surely you're 100% go for the Xerneas break. But with this, this actually means that he's missed. But he can still 
No, he, he can't use Xerneas' uh, second attack, which needs three energies. Wait, but we, I mean, it would also only do 100 damage, yeah, which is but, not great. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but as, well, I'm not so sure if it would be a better opportunity than trying to use Geomancy. Or maybe you go for a, a Tapulele to attack. I think... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this makes sense because you really don't want to lose more Xerneas, especially if you have two break prize. And the Tapu Lady is doing a decent amount of damage, actually. It's going to be able to do 130, which is what Rainbow Spear would have yeah. done, actually, as well. So, but getting to preserve the energy and going to make it a little bit harder for Stien to get the KO because he needs one energy to get the KO instead of already having the KO. And even then, if Stien does take the knockout with this uh, Guard of War onto the Tapu Lele, then Steam will go down to three prizes and leave himself vulnerable to end again. And Tiamat will just be able to KO back with yeah. the stuff he already has up. And even if the Tapu Lele gets KO'd and it's two prizes, he Tamara only loses. No, he does not lose an energy at all, yeah. as he has an XP share in yeah. play. Oh, the big card there from Steam. Ace of Roller picking up the God of War, tide, healing it all off, and um, Steam able to. Put down another guard right afterwards. Of course, reattach double colorless. That will be enough for the, the choice band that the fairy already on it to actually take the knockout of infinite force. It's a very unfortunate turn for Tamal, as uh, now that means that he's going to lose the double colorless yeah. and he's going to have to like dig really hard in order to take take the one hit knockout on his guard of war. There comes an ultra ball, probably going for a Kulia. Yeah, yeah, probably indeed. Um, he wants to make sure that he doesn't miss tempo with if. Because yeah. it is possible for Tamal to find the KO, and if he does, and Stian doesn't have a follow up, then he probably loses. So Stian needs to make sure that he has access to all the stuff that he needs. And he's going to shuffle in two Fairy Energy and a uh, Guard of War off of that Super Rod. Sadly, losing the. Well, actually, no, sadly, losing the Choice Band. It doesn't matter at all, actually, because the Choice Band is normally not, not relevant in this matchup. It is this no. time because of the Lele, but normally against Zonius Breaks, obviously, it doesn't do anything. But it's still nice to attach because it doesn't harm you in any way and uh, you you don't have it in your deck anymore yeah um using his extra attachment he puts it on the bench curlier gonna do a abyssal hand you actually see the second artillery so now he has two it's a it's a pretty bad spot for tamal doing a second abyssal hand not seeing oh he does see his guard of actually so he'll be able to get out next turn but yeah this is going to be a big turn for tamal now he's going to lose two energy uh Steen's going to take two prizes, so now Tamao needs to see two energy himself, and he needs to see his rescue stretcher. Well, oh, there was an exp... no, there were no XP shares? Did you forget to use it? I XP share is optional, isn't it? It, it is, so... Is it? Yeah, yeah, it is optional. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if Tamao forgot... Or, or he, he does not want... Oh, no, no, the, 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 the type of lady had a double colorless on it. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I, yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. Uh, Tamal wouldn't. I don't think Tamal would miss something like that. I mean, it's the people really high level players have been known to make really obvious mistakes like that before. But yeah, I was gonna say it's not in a, such a crucial sort of uh, way. Uh, but of course, you oh, just see super odd at last Tamal. So that's good for him. He's able to shuffle back in the Xerneas break and get himself a Tapulele. Gonna get the use the one attack, get Sycamore, and uh, it's gonna see. How likely it is that he draws the Xerneas? He has, I believe, two Ultra Balls left in deck plus the Xerneas, so his outs are decent. He needs to, he would need to also hit a Fairy Energy plus an Elixir or another DCE to get a knockout. But if he does hit all of this, I think he's actually in with a good shot because then he will get his other breaks out the prizes, hopefully, unless yeah. he's really unlucky and the, the last two prizes are both of <laughs> the last two breaks. Should be fine. So let's see what tomorrow's going to do. Well, he's won the type of the second war, so he's going to definitely do that. He he has another choice band. Yeah. Oh, he has a decision here. He already has the fairy, so okay, he's deciding not to play it. I think he realizes that he's uh, he needs to oh, give himself the chance. Oh, there's the double colors energy. And there's the ultra ball as well. So Tamara has got the KO. Ca finally catching a bit of a break after prizing to uh, <laughs> get, get, get catching a break. Zernius break. <laughs> It wasn't even on purpose at this time. <laughs> but, but yeah, no quite, pun intended. No pun intended, but so, yeah. Able to catch a, literally catch a break as he uh, plays an ultra ball, <laughs> uh, discards the two, gets his only break from the deck, and does find a double colors as well, so he can attach that to the Tapu Lele, and he will be able to get the one-hit knockout on this guard of war. 
Which is huge. Yeah, it would be absolutely huge because that means that now he's able to, well, he's able to yeah, take the knockout and he's only two prizes away from winning. Whereas even if um, Stian is able to KO the Zonius break back, um, he will just fall prey to another revenge attacker from Tamao's yeah. side and he has been able to get a Zonius break from his prizes. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Steen is losing a lot of energy here, he's losing, of course, one of his main attackers, and he is losing uh, one ability. Yeah, he has got the right replacement guard in his hand, so he can just evolve that straight away, which is good for him. Uh, he also is only only two energy short from carrying the... And I, in fact, only one energy short from carrying the Xerneas break too, which is really, also really good for him. He's got an end. Uh, he's not going to play it just yet, I'd imagine. He's going to take a quick look first. Just to make sure that there's nothing else he wants instead, yeah. but no, he will be he will be going for the end. But gotta be very careful to make sure he evolves first before playing it. <laughs> that's uh, that'd be that'd be bad if he didn't do that. No, there it is. So Gardevoir gets the curly gets evolved to a Gardevoir, and then gonna do yeah secret, secret spring to and then maybe attach the other one as well with just regular attachment. Mm. Maybe yes, maybe no. He's maybe. still considering. And, and, and. So, so maybe thinking he wants to see a double colorless and then attach that to the bench instead of maybe just well, I don't know just not, not deciding not to use his second attachment essentially <laughs> and this is a bit unfortunate for Tamao because now this means that he just although the, the break is back in deck he has lost the immediate access he had to it before yeah. so now he has to dig a little bit get maybe get a little bit lucky on this end draw in order to see it. he has got the orange guru to bail him, out, bail him out a little bit which does help but yeah, all the same, not not the ideal. Bastian found an energy again. Now is attaching the basic energy from his hand and um, using Octavius' ability. Yeah, Abyssal Hand able to find him some more cards. Now, actually, the one thing in race for Tamao is if Stian is unable to find a field blow, then he's actually going to be able to preserve both the energy and the Zonius break because oh, Tamao has yeah. two EXP shares down. So he's not using the one hit KO? No, he, absolutely not. Uh, in fact, this is. It means that it literally all he needs for the win is the Bretonius break. Yeah. And yeah, he's ready for it. So yeah, knock out the both the XP shares will trigger, both the energies move across. Up comes the the thing. And he's got oh, the Zenius break! Oh that's game for Tamau. Yep. So Tamau for once, or well, attaching an energy just in case, yeah. Getting very lucky off of, well, not very lucky, getting lucky off of the end and able to find the Xerneas break to evolve and do live stream for 230 for the game. And Tamao right. will go 1 0 up in this series. Yeah, if you were really, really the uh, lucky turn event for Tamao, has uh, had a really bad luck turn, but then able to get, get the KO with the double colors and the Xerneas break after finding the Super Rod and able to fish out another Xerneas break from the prizes to steal the deal by knocking out this Gardevoir. So let's have a quick look at the chat, guys. Yep. Um, yep, yeah, so Rescue Stretcher is hand for Tamao. Tamao, he only needs an energy. Oh, yeah, oh, I didn't even see that. He also did, he already did Rescue Stretcher. And yeah, so there you got the energy there. He was actually all good. Um, oh, uh, Martini19, thank you very much for hosting us. Yep, yeah, guys, we're going into round, we see there, we got the round timer there. It's round 11. Um, yep, yeah, Philip won the first round. Um, Please ask Phyllis about Philip about the Ace of Roller conundrum. Yeah, oh, you did ask him. him. Yeah, does he not play it then? He does not play them. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, it it somehow seemed to work out for him. Yeah, it does. Oh, someone a techno kid. Uh, someone asked us about the records last oh, round. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I forget what I did. It was a bit of a rush between the last rounds. Um, yeah. I I'll try to fix it. Yeah, we we will try and have the records up for next round. Promise, guys. Um, yeah. Now nah, Xerneas is godish. Yeah, yeah. Xerneas is a really good deck. I, I like it a lot, actually. So we see Stian already had a mulligan. So uh, Tomero placing a dice to to keep track of the extra cards he may choose to play. Yeah. Uh, draw. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and then second mulligan. Ooh, a bit unfortunate. <laughs> so let's see how this is going to turn out. Um, well, if you if you were Stian. Uh, well, what what starter would you what what Pokemon would you like to start with? Um, it would probably be a Lowland Vulpix, or at least uh, some some. Well, as he's playing Fairy Garden, any any Pokemon he he is happy to attach a Fairy Energy to and then retreat into a Lowland Vulpix. Yeah, I think pretty much when you're playing Gardevoir, I 
the, the starts that I sort of mind the least essentially are Volpix, Diancy, and Rolts. Yeah. Like, um, even Remoraid is okay because, like you said, you can just really pay the one retreat to, if you're not playing Fairy Garden or use Fairy Garden with the Fairy Energy to retreat into the Volpix and use Beacon. But yeah, it, it's funny actually. Um, Gardevoir is one of these decks which actually doesn't really have too many really bad starting Pokemon because everything, yeah. all the basics normally that you play have one retreat, so you can always only just one energy away from being able to search for two Pokemon off of the uh, beacon. Um, I think the only start that really s sucks is Lele, but it doesn't even, even suck for the fact that it's a Lele, it's just for the fact that you have one less to access yeah. to use your supporters, so because. The thing about Lily is that it actually has a decent amount of HP and a decent attack, so actually having it out isn't even the end of the world. That's true. But you mentioned DNC as a starter before. I don't think Stian is playing DNC as we haven't seen it. So I far. think yeah, I think you're right. And oh actually oh. this um this Ultra Ball not brilliant though. He has to discard two Gardevoirs. I mean he does have a rescue stretchers in his deck, so And Super Rod. And Super Rod. So he'll be able to overcome that later, but I'm sure he would have rather not had to Oh <laughs> He has it in his hand, that's yeah. why he did it. Again. Okay. Maybe maybe there oh there won't be a Sycamore this turn, but maybe we'll see a Sycamore next turn. Uh yeah. Yeah, quite possibly. Um in any case, Stian did the yeah, the Ultra Ball for the Tap Lady for the Bridget again, getting out a Rolt to Remoraid and an Eevee, and with a fairy in hand attaching to the Eevee to use energy evolution to bring it straight up into the Sylveon, which we saw him be able to use to great effect last game. But then going back to Tamao's side, we see he has took two Xerneas in his starting fuel already. And he has access to Bridget with Tapu Lele, so you're gonna see. Yeah, there's the Bridget. He's eyeing up um, Xerneas and an Oranguru already, and but it looks like his fourth Xerneas might be. Oh no, it's not. So he actually has the perfect setup already. All four of his Xerneas and his Oranguru are out in the field. That's pretty pretty good. Uh, it's Tamara's first turn, and uh, as Stian started the match, Tamara may attack. So uh, he we will probably see a. Um, Geomancy pretty soon. D does he have the fairy in his hand? Did we see? We did not see so far. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, he. It's pretty likely he has one as he's playing a, a big amount of energy than his deck. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would have thought so too. Um, this is. Looks like he's he's uh, missing something in his deck. What? Well, I, I don't. I'm not sure if he's missing anything. I think he's just uh, doing a really thorough prize check. Yeah. This, this is day two. You know, this is the. Uh, where the dreams can be uh, made, made or broken, so I think he's just making sure absolutely to you know, do things properly and just uh, yeah. know exactly what he has and hasn't got access to over the course of this game. And he does have the fairy energy in his hand, yeah. so that's really good. But he, given that he's shuffling his deck, he probably has a max elixir he wants to play first. Probably. So let's see if he's going to do that now. Indeed. Looking at his hand, uh, yeah, there's the Max Alex here. Yeah. If he didn't have Max Alex, he would have 100% just uh, gone straight to the Geomancy because yeah. he knows to. Oh, actually, it depends. I mean, now that he's one game one, maybe this time he does everything, you no, know, not so, ru <laughs> not rushing so much, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, but, but I don't think so. I mean, it's still 18 minutes left. Well, and uh, tomorrow is actually, an, well, it's, it should be a good matchup for him, so. Um, yeah. Oh, he actually has two Max oh, Alexes. Yeah. First one was a hit. Will this one be a hit as well? Sadly not. No. No. One out of two ain't bad though. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, and yeah, it has the repair energy, which is the most important thing. So going to be able to attach to the active, and we will now see a geomancy onto the two Xerneases, exactly the start to yeah. once. And see, we we didn't see any shuffling here, so he he does not seem to take that much time. No, no, no. no, no <laughs> Let's no, put no. it like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, you know, you know, Stian is playing like absolute lightning, just, you know, whack fairy energy, whack down the sycamore, draw all the cards, retreat, yeah. bring up the Sylveon and do magical ribbon. <laughs> yeah, Stian knows that the first game took uh, a lot of time and he, he really need, wants the win. Um, yeah. yeah. He, he already lost his first round, so he does not want to continue losing. No, no, of course not. So he wants to end. And if he does win game two, he'd rather actually win a quick game three instead of tying. So he's going to try and play as quickly as possible here. And uh, with the magical ribbon, he's going to search for some stuff again. Again, he does it so fast, we can't even see what he gets. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Stian's turn's already over. And now it's Tomas' turn again. Um, 
indeed it is. Uh, Tamao has a Xerneas break, two Xerneas breaks, so already better than last game where he had uh, two of his three prized. Um, he has a Choice Band to attach as well, and a Sycamore for the boot. Oh, no, an N, even better. So wow. Tamao really, really on point with these Ns, having them at the exact right time to make sure that these Magical Ribbons don't... I think literally every single Magical Ribbon that Stian has had, yeah. Tamao's managed to N away. That's exactly what you want. It's the same thing with... Um with um, Drampa's big wheel GX attack yeah. or with Metagross algorithm, you don't really want your opponent to be there with a with a big hand or um, the five a, yeah, perfect yeah, cards yeah, in algorithm. Yeah, or the just three perfect cards. Yeah, with um, Hollow Hunt is the other one, isn't it? Like there's like any of these really strong sort of a uh, search your X for something card, uh, search for X of number of cards yeah. from your whatever pile. Um, really want to make sure you stop those as much as you can. But meanwhile, back onto Mao's side, we are just going to see what's well, after the N. Just going to be another Geomancy, counting his energy just to see what's available to him, what isn't. Uh, and yeah, just seeing Geomancy. One really cool thing that Mao did there, notice how he had a few other choice bands in his hand, but he didn't play them. This is because he wants to force the N to use a Fuel Blower to discard the choice band that's already there, and therefore forcing the N to get less value out of his Fuel Blower by only discarding one thing instead of two. A lot of play, a lot of like not as good players in that situation might have thought, oh, I've got these choice bands down, I'm just going like, to whack them all down straight away. But if you do that, you leave yourself wide open to not being able to use those choice bands at the right time because they're discarded for fuel blowers and then you don't have access to them. Yeah, true. It's very, very important to make note of this. Um, so we actually have got uh, Tamao and Stian's records for you right yeah. now. Um, so Tamara should be at 7 to 1 at the moment. And uh, Stian is at 7-3. Yeah, so for the next round, we will try and do some uh, an extra little bit of text underneath each player just to actually show the match records yeah. for you. But uh, we thought we'd just, we'd just relay them vocally at least so you guys have the match records of these players for this round. Yeah. Um, wow, did Stian just do Magical Ribbon again and pass? And then just get end straight away by Tamao again? I think that's exactly what happened. Probably. Oh. Unfortunate, unfortunate turn for Stian is, uh, again, Tamao is... Um, Actually, not even again, because like, Tamao for a little bit was on the back foot last game, but this time Tamao is just hitting absolutely everything he needs. N on every magical ribbon, Geomancy has a Geomancy, getting the perfect setup of all of his Xerneases on the field, got the Oranguru out, double colorless. Yeah. Tamao has everything. Definitely. And even so, I have the feeling that Stian has a slightly better setup than last game. Tamao is just so, so uh, fast, Stian can't really keep up with it. Yeah. And again, just like the last game, the first knockout will be for a uh, for an absurd amount of damage onto a Sylveon GX, with Tamao taking a very early lead. Yeah, Stian's deck is built up to, to set up with uh, Sylveon rather than with Deancey or with uh, Alolan Vulpix. We still haven't seen an Alolan Vulpix so far, so I doubt he's even playing it. And um, yeah, giving a, a two, two prize card... Um, Attacker for a set of Pokemon is a slight disadvantage in this matchup. Yeah, yeah, it is because especially considering it's a matchup where Sylveon is inherently makes you a little bit slower yeah. because you have to waste not not waste, you have to do the attack, and that gives it a time out and actually turn a Geomancy, which then in turn means he has the time to build up the energy to actually KO the Sylveon. So yeah. it's really not ideal at all. Especially you see uh, Ultra Ball discarding a Gallade and a Max Potion, and it's like it's the end going to grab Artillery off of that. Let me correct um, myself. I think both of these players are at 7 to 1, and this also explains why Stian is uh, trying to play so far, because uh, it's not a win and in, but it's a tie and die. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so we've, we've heard it. I love this. I've heard it before, but it's, uh, yeah, it's brilliant, yeah. Um, tie and die is basically where, yeah, obviously, it, it basically, it's just tying means that you um, almost almost uh, basically yeah, completely out of contention yeah. for the, the top eight so yeah these guys basically just need to keep winning if they want to keep their chance their hopes of winning this tournament alive so with that Stian does take the knockout but Tamao not losing a huge amount of energy I don't think oh, oh no 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 he, no he did there's actually no wait is that any I can't tell if that's any XP share on the um, Tapu Lele or not um... I, think it, I think it is because otherwise you probably wouldn't have put a fairy on it. I'm not so sure. Because it can't be. Well, well, you could, we can only see the the header where it says item, so yeah. it could be anything. Yeah, I, I think 
Well, either way, Tamao has the KO. He just uh, yeah, does like live stream again. And uh, if you're Stian at this point, what what do you even do? Like, it doesn't even it doesn't even matter matter if you just take the KO again. Tamao loses one energy, so he literally just you know attaches one more energy and wins the game. Well, maybe maybe he just sends a Remorite or artillery in the active position to buy himself some more time. But even though. Tamaro is in such a good port position. Tamaro, if, if Stian had fuel blower, it would be a different story. Because then Tamaro would need two energy to yeah. get a knockout, and and he would need the choice band, another replacement choice band as well. But um, instead, what, what's going on here? Stian is looking at his deck. Oh, okay, the one attack friend and playing it. Yeah, Stian really needs to see a fuel fuel blower here. If he doesn't, I think this game is is as good as over. Yeah, but Stian Stian is now drawing five cards. If he can play any of these cards, he's still able to use Artillery's ability, so, um, yeah. He, he has, he has outs, he has the chances to dig for stuff, he's definitely not out of the game completely, it's just, it's like we're saying, he's just in a really bad position. There is yeah. the field blower, that's really important, that's so. something. Yeah, and I think I saw him, he has a second Artillery in hand as well, so he can actually like do a really big dig here. This might be exactly what he needs to turn this around. There's a choice band. Oh no, there's no, there's no artillery, my bad, but yeah. Big fuel blower, discarding yeah. the choice band and the EXP share. Rescue stretcher is going to be played, and that is going to do nothing? Does he actually have any Pokemon left? Oh, he does. Yeah, but I think you can't play rescue stretcher for nothing. No. You need a legal target, so... Um... But it looks, I think... He, he might have, I think he might have been expecting to see an artillery in there, but it wasn't, so instead he's just opting to grab a Rolts. Or maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. So Rolts to hand, he's going to bench that straight away. And now he needs to start digging for energy. So the, the Abyssal hand, he's, he's a double colorless, but he needs a fairy. There Aww. it is. He looked so relieved. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he did. He <laughs> oh, look at, look at him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he needed a fairy energy, that was key, because yeah. the, the important thing to remember about Infinite Force, although it does 30 for each energy attached to both active Pokemon, it actually, the, you need fairy to pay for the energy cost of the attack itself, so if you attach DCE to a, to a Gardevoir, can't do anything. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Something that it's, it could be, it could be potentially easy to forget. Um, now, Tamau is still not out of contention to take a KO here, he just needs more. What he needs now is a double colorless and the choice band. Yep. And uh But Sertomaro is in a good position. If he's able to to put some damage on the God of War this turn and uh Stian is not able to heal it or to, to have an Acer roller, um Tomaro still has a lot of options. Yeah, yeah, of course he does. Um it looks like Tomaro has one double color left in the deck. He has we know he has two choice bands because we were mentioned earlier about you know him not attaching them needlessly. Yeah. Um but yeah. Oh, and I guess it, he also could. Uh, Max looks a fairy energy plus choice band would also do it, I guess. Probably. So, so he attached an XP share to the bench Tapulele and is now going for Psychomore, digging for the double colors energies. But. He did no. not find it. But as I mentioned before, it's still not too bad for Tamaro. He's still in a leading position. His, his board looks quite good. Um, he now has. Again, an XP share in game, so he's not losing all his energies if the Xerneas break gets KO'd, so not too bad. No, indeed not. Uh, now, Tamau, he has got something that I, I might have seen any, a um, Max that's in his hand, but if he it does have it, whether he plays it or not, this turn could be. Oh, he's going for an Ultra Ooh. Ball, okay. Probably going for another break. Yeah, either that or if he has another basic to access another basic because yeah. the thing is he wants to probably just geomatic again this turn and if he geomatics again this turn he really wants to do it onto two things with no energy yeah. on so again he doesn't lose any energy if something gets knocked out he discards an energy even if he was not too sure about it um yeah uh, but he has got super rod in his hand so he can just play that to get everything back and yeah need to my always going for a second break Probably will play the super on now as well. Shuffle yeah. in some of those energies he lost from earlier. How many does he get back? He gets to get back. One Xerneas break. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it gets back the Orin Guru as well, that's quite important. And the fairy energy. 
He might still go for Geomancy. I'm, I'm thinking that's almost certainly what he's going to yeah. do because, yeah, it's like I said, like, uh, um, well, no, I, did, I didn't actually say this, but going for the Geomancy, spreading onto things with less energy on makes sense that he loses less if it's yeah, not something out. It's not only that, but he could, if he did decide to do live stream and attack with this active Xerneas break, um, he might run into. Well, An extra roll. Yeah, exactly. It says. <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. Thank you. Um, yeah, because uh, Acerella would actually set back yeah. to out a lot. And I imagine that's what Stian's going to try and dig for here. He doesn't have it yet, but he has one artillery to try and dig for it. And assuming his second one isn't prized, he finds an ultra ball or artillery, he can then dig with the second one as well. And that's exactly what he needs to see right now. Stian doesn't look that happy. He's just he's just just agonizing a little bit, just trying yeah. to think about how he actually wants to do this. Because I mean, the other thing he can do is if he can't find the Ace of Roller, he can just retreat into the Rolt, assuming he finds another Guard of Art of Orbit into an attack with that. That's his other option. But then Tomato wins off a Cruise Ball. Either way, it's not looking great for him. You can see, it. I'm sure Stian doesn't want to be playing as slowly as he does, but he needs to be very careful about how he approaches this because yeah, sometimes you just have to think about what you're doing. <laughs> And then there is a sycamore. What does he see? A rare candy guard. Of okay, that, that's uh, yeah. so he found his alternative essentially. No Cerola, but he does now with that forced him out to have the Guzman. And he even found uh, two energies, I believe. Oh, he's discarding one. Uh, he might have already attached this turn. I'm not, I'm not but he, sure. he has two um, abilities available. Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah, you're right. Um, in which case I'm not sure. Probably just playing the Optimal first just to see what you, get, what you can get. I think you yeah. might have wanted the second Artillery, but it's probably Pride if you didn't get it off of that Optimal just then. Yeah, don't go for the Abyssal Hand. Uh, and then, yeah, just going to use the Fairy Garden, retreat into the freshly evolved Guard of War. Gonna going to be able to pick up the Knockout of Infinite Force, but uh, Tamau does have two EXP shares out, so he will not be losing any energy, assuming that it's DM. Did not draw into another field blow, which it looks like he didn't. So, yeah. yeah. Down goes the Xerneas. Yeah, knockout. Both the energies are preserved. Up comes the Xerneas break. Does Tamal have the Guzma for the game? He has no one guru. He's going to dig for it. He has an Ultra oh. Ball. Oh, no, oh. Um, I probably might have had a, access to a Lele, I guess not. Maybe he also has no Guzma. Yeah, there's a double card, oh. so he can just knock out the active anyway. Yeah, just making sure counting. Yep. Yeah. So that's the win for tomorrow. Yeah. It's live stream for two hundred and thirty knocks out the Gardevoir, and uh, that will be a two zero win for tomorrow. Great job to him. So unfortunately, I we can't do a winners interview this turn because we started the uh, featured match a little bit late, and uh, we. They're kind of waiting for yeah, us, essentially. They are waiting for us, and we do not want to delay the tournament. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we'll be back with the next round shortly, guys. Until then, don't go away. Thank <laughs> you.